just arrived here in Milan, the fashion capital of Italy and one of the fashion capitals of the world. We have exactly 25 hours to explore and to enjoy the city. So we have a full day packed with things to do and I hope you can take some value from the tips I'm gonna give you in this video. So this is our hotel room. We are staying at the Dimora Storica. And here we have a little balcony with a view of Milan. Ooh, I can definitely see myself having a little glass of wine here. Relaxing after exploring. I must confess it's a big shift to be here right now because uh, we were just in Lake Como, um, which is like one and a half hours away by train from here. And Lake Como is just like beautiful and peaceful and calm. We stayed in a small village there. I even vlogged the whole experience. You can check my other video here. And we also have a second balcony here on this side of the building. Let's check it out. I'm always checking like the views from the balconies. I really like that. Oh, nice. So this is one of the main avenues here in Milan. Milan is one of the biggest cities in Italy. Um, so yeah, there's going to be plenty of activities, no more relaxation, but actually exploring and enjoying. So let's go. But of course, to have the energy to go exploring, we are gonna need some fuel. So we came here to the Luba, which is one of the sort of like most fashionable uh, places to go for lunch here in Milan. Well, actually not just for lunch, the place is open 24-7. Well, not 24-7. <laughs> the place is open the whole day, so not only for lunch. The ambiance and the interior design of the place are very nice. From what I've noticed, every single detail here is well thought out. Oh, the water is coming. Even the water bottle is branded on the name of the bar. Everything here looks very Instagrammable. Look at this plate. Yeah, yeah there is this nice scent in the air. Cheers. Cheers. A little refreshment, middle of the day. So penicillin is one of our favorite cocktails together with espresso martini. It's like a whiskey based cocktail with a little bit of like the smoky flavor and uh, orange and ginger. We've had it recently in Sicily. Yeah, this one tastes really good. Can't complain. Mm. Very refreshing. So what did you order? I ordered a spaghetti with a yellow tail uh, tuna, I think that is, and some other seafood. And I ordered a couscous with seafood. They also brought some sauce here. Bon appetit. Uh -huh. Typical Sicilian hat. Oh, these herbs look really good. So you've probably heard about the brand Prada, which is one of the most famous brands in the world, the most famous fashion brands in the world. And uh, here in Milan, they also have a Foundation Prada, Fondazione Prada, which is a um, sort of art gallery exhibition hall created by Prada. So let's have a look. A 
So here at Fundazione Prada, besides the art exhibitions, the space also includes film projects, conferences, scientific activities, music, and performative events. And the area of this whole complex has around seven industrial buildings with three modern ones. And the most eye-catching is the golden building that you can see from miles away. And it was designed by the Dutch architect Rem Koolhaas. And the exhibition they're having right now is called Useless Bodies. And according to the description, they claim that it explores the contemporary status of the body in our post-industrial age. <whistles> Curious to see how that will translate, so let's have a look. Let's go. Oh yeah, true. It's the exact same pose as the Little Mermaids from Denmark. Mm -hmm. Copenhagen. Yeah, exactly. So it's my honor to introduce to you your personal hell. No! You have to work here for the rest of your life. No! Please, no! This is so dreadful and so grey. No, 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 no. This is the dreadfulness of contemporary times. Okay, that would be my seat. Okay, the bathroom of this place is kind of crazy. You don't really have proper doors here, you have this kind of like holes on the wall and that's where you can push. Okay, this bathroom is also really funny because you basically just enter there and that's it. Like you have this mirror and basically there's nothing here. And again, the toilet finds itself in some secret door. It's Prada, Prada toilets. Another cool thing you can find here in the Fondazione Prada is the cafe designed by Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson is one of my favorite movie directors. If you don't know who he is, it's worth checking it out because his movies are amazing. So I think we need some refreshments right now. actually looking for some delicious sweets but they don't have much going on right now because of the time it's kind of late so most of the things are sold out so we just got a cappuccino and a tonic water but it's worth coming here for the aesthetics you really are transported into like the Grand Budapest hotel oh, ah yeah. something like this it this gives sort of this vibe yeah it's a bit vintage with whimsical and yeah like some childhood mixed uh, Childhood dream, yeah, just like a Wes Anderson. Like movie. those uh, candies, those candies. He 
he designed this cafe after what he would imagine as the perfect cafe for him to work in. Ah, interesting. There's also something like old American about those uh, the colors here. Yeah, right. Like some American diner. Exactly. Interesting. So this is the area where the young people like to hang out on Sunday evenings or just any other evenings actually, not just Sunday evenings. Here along this area of the canal you can find many bars. It has a very nice, fun atmosphere. I had no idea that they had something like this in Milan. It's uh, giving Venice, Venice a little bit. to come here to the Vista d'Arsena and we decided to come to this place because it has a nice atmosphere and we are here by the water watching the sunset having some cocktails we ordered here some cariocas which is a Brazilian style cocktail with cachaça passion fruit sugar cane juice and lime and they have this thing here that from 6 to 9 in the evening you have uh, aperitivo so you get some food some like slices of pizza with olives and chips together with your drink Oh my god, I am leaving for this cocktail. I think we're gonna have another one, a second round. Oh my god, but these pizzas, they look amazing. Good morning Milan. Yes, I look tired. It's very early in the morning, but we just have to deal with it for the rest of the video or for the next couple of hours at least. We still have a couple of hours to go before we leave. So we want to tackle as much as we can. But first of all, of course, we need a little breakfast. One of the most traditional pastry shops here in Milan is the Cova Monte Napoleone in the Monte Napoleone streets. Cova is one of Italy's oldest pasticcerias and they are said to use very high quality ingredients for the pastries. The Italians usually just get their espresso at the bar and a little pastry and they keep on moving. But we are not Italian. Here we are, the only ones sitting in the whole place. I'm just guessing maybe if someone from Italy can explain this in the comments, but I feel like here they maybe don't drink the coffee at home. They just like get it on the go, the breakfast with the coffee, yeah. the espresso and then keep it moving. Yeah, if any Italian is watching that, please let us know. Really good. And by the way, this area where the Monte Napoleone is located is called the Quadrilatero della Moda. So here is where you're gonna find the most famous fashion brands. So you have like uh, Louis Vuitton, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, Prada. And Milan is also the place where some of those brands have their offices, no? Like Versace, Fendi, some of their offices are around this area as well. So if you're really into fashion, it's worth checking out this neighborhood. And it's also interesting to see what people on the streets are wearing. I definitely found some fashion inspirations here in Milan on the street. How about you? Definitely. Very inspired. We've also noticed that here in Milan people wear really nice sunglasses. Sunglasses and eyewear in general, so I'm definitely taking some notes. This place is so popular that the lines here sometimes go around the corner. Luckily, since it's still quite early, the line is not that big. 
So they have quite a few different options. They have fried, they have baked, they have focaccia and some other stuff. Quite difficult to decide what to choose. They have gorgonzola. Like when in doubt, I always go for like the special of the day, something like this, because mm. that's usually something you can get only there. Facts. Mm, these ones look so good. Like these are the fried ones. These are the baked ones. They also have arancino, focaccia, calzone, and the prices are pretty good. Let's see if it's good. Nice. Very soft. Mm. Mm. Wow. Look at this. Look at how creamy the cheese is. 10 out of 10 for sure. And it was only what, like 3 euros? Now we decided to go for the pastry of the day. So this one is made with uh, pesto, mozzarella and tomatoes. the same problem and everybody kept saying that this is one of the best bakeries in Milan and now I can confirm Oh, I actually really like this bag. How much is it? Let's check. 3,600 euros. Uh, anyway, so... This place is an institution here in the Galleria Vittorio Emanuele. They have beautiful pastries. I think it's gonna be a nice dessert for the afternoon. Funny juxtaposition between like all this, this fashion where you have to be really skinny and then all this indulgent sweets. So this was founded in 1824. Crazy. So we both gone here at the Babo Run, which is one of our favorite pastries here in Italy. I have to be honest, I expected it to be a little bigger than this, but I hope the taste compensates for the size. And of course, a trip to Milan is not complete without checking the main attraction of the city, which is the Duomo. Di Milano. Unfortunately, we are not going to go inside today because the lines are huge and we don't have that much time. But if you have the time, I think it's worth checking it out. At least that's what I think. I haven't been inside yet. But at least we can admire the Gothic architecture from the outside. It's a mix of Gothic with Renaissance. Incredibly beautiful. want more 25 hours guides like this let me know in the comments i have an entire playlist here full of interesting places in italy to visit so make sure to check that out and i see you on the next one arrivederci, arrivederci.